Hi, this is Pastor David Klotfelter at Community Christian Alliance Church in Northridge, California. I'm starting a series of short video messages on the topic of Christian faith and modern science. I'm doing this because I see a need in the church for, for better teaching than often exists. That's true in our church and in many churches, I believe. And I believe this may be a good way of presenting teaching that can be useful to individuals and to groups. I'm thinking of very short videos, about 10 minutes each, no more than that. Each one dealing with basically one simple question or topic. And then it would be possible for people to watch these in series, in a small group or individually, to discuss them if they wish, to think about them, to read further if they so desire. Who might be interested in this? Well, anybody who's wondered how to reconcile modern science with the Christian faith, and especially with the early chapters of Genesis. This would include a lot of students, high school students, college students, and adults of all ages as well. Uh, parents who were trying to figure out how to teach their kids on these topics. Let me give you a couple of scenarios to make this more real to you. Uh, think about Jean. Jean grew up in the church. She loves Christ. Uh, her faith is the most important thing to her. And she remembers as a child being in Sunday school classes and learning the stories of the early chapters of Genesis, the, the, the creation of the world in six days, which she understood at that time to be six literal 24-hour days. Uh, that made sense to her at that point. She, she remembers the story of Adam and Eve, Adam being created from the earth and Eve from Adam's side. The story of Noah's flood where the waters were so high above the entire earth that they covered even Mount Everest. Uh, and, and this is the way she learned those stories. This is the way that makes sense to her. Now she's in college and she's helping with Sunday school herself. And she's teaching the same stories but with a slightly bad conscience because Jean knows from her studies that modern science takes issue with this view of history, this view of the world at several points. For example, the general belief of most scientists today is that the universe is about 13.7 billion years old. Now that doesn't fit very well with a six literal day creation because in the Genesis account, human beings are created on day six, which would mean that the first part of the creation started just five days earlier than that. And nobody believes that humanity is 13.7 billion years old. So there's obviously a conflict here. Uh, she knows, of course, that evolutionists believe that human beings evolved from other primates, lower or primates, or however you want to think of it. And she knows that most geologists don't believe that there's ever been a universal deluge that has actually covered the entire Earth. And so she doesn't know what to do about this. Her faith is everything to her. She wants to teach it. She wants to pass it on. She wants to be intellectually respectable also. And she's just not sure how to resolve these things in her own mind. Or here's another scenario. Think about Bill. Bill did not grow up in the church. He grew up in a very secular environment and grew up loving science. He, he did well in science in school. He majored in chemistry in college. He's teaching high school science now. He reads Scientific American and Discover. He loves what science has shown us about the world, what it's taught us about the world, how it's transformed our world. He loves to share his enthusiasm with his students. He's excited about science. Uh, there is a part of Bill, though, that has felt that there's something missing in his life. And not too long ago, his wife began attending a Bible study at a local church. And she came to him sometime later telling him that she wanted to become a follower of Jesus Christ. Well, that seemed strange to him, but they have a great relationship. He trusts her. And so we said to her, OK, look, I'll try going to church with you for a while and, and just see about it. So he did. To his surprise, he's really enjoyed it. He likes the music. He likes the people. He's very interested in this man, Jesus Christ. He never really looked at this person before. And now that he's looking at him, he, he wants to know as much as he possibly can about Jesus. Bill even feels, from what he's learned so far, that Christianity does not seem to be at odds with the scientific view of the world. For example, uh, scientists believe that the universe began in a big bang. Uh, it's very difficult for anybody to speak with any confidence whatsoever about anything happening before the Big Bang because even time, as well as space and matter, seem to have come into existence at that moment. Christianity teaches that God created the world out of nothing. Well, it seems to Bill that there's a lot of compatibility between these two views. So Bill is thinking, 
maybe I can do this. Maybe I can be a Christian and also be a man of science. But this last Sunday, something happened that really threw him for a loop. The preacher, the pastor who was talking, mentioned in passing that God created the world in six literal 24-hour days about six to 10,000 years ago. Bill felt like he'd been punched in the gut because, as he told his wife later on when they were home, he understands the scientific rationale for saying that the universe is old. He understands how we've come to the point that scientists are saying this. He doesn't see how he can give that up easily. He doesn't want to abandon his perspective on science. He certainly doesn't want to commit intellectual suicide. If being a Christian means that he must believe what the pastor said, he's not sure he can do it. He told his wife, I, I want to follow you in this. I'd like to become a follower of Jesus like you, but I just don't know if I can. Well, maybe you relate in some way to Gene, or maybe you relate in some way to Bill, or you know somebody who's like this, or you're concerned about your kids, that they're going to face this kind of conflict themselves, and you want to know how to help them. If so, this series will help you. I, I've thought about these issues for 35 years or more. I'm, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a professional Hebrew scholar. I'm a pastor. I'm a generalist. But I've thought a lot about these matters, and I think I have something to share. What I want to suggest to you is this. Please view these videos, at least the first several, in their order, the order in which I create them, because I want to create for you a kind of perspective, a kind of framework for thinking about issues in relationship to the conflicts or the, the relationship between faith and science. I think it will really help you to go through these videos one by one as I put them up. Now, I'm going to start in the next video with a question that may seem uh, very obvious. It seems obvious to me, and yet to many people it's not. And the question is simply this, is it even legitimate for a Christian a follower of Christ, a believer in the Bible, to also be a person with a deep interest in science. Can you be a Christian scientist? That's what I want to talk about next time. Thanks very much for watching.